Utility, as most of you have studied in your introductory microeconomics course, is the satisfaction that a person acquires when he or she consumes. So we can say that utility comes from the different quantities of goods that a person consumes. So let's say that the quantity of a good that a person consumes is denoted by x sub i. x sub i. Uh, x sub 1. x sub 1 would denote the quantity of good 1. x sub 2 would denote the quantity of good 2. Until x sub n. And this would denote the quantity of good n. So u, as we've defined a while ago, u is now a function of x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, 4, 5, until x sub n. And this is what we mean by utility. And what this means is that the quantity of good 1 to good n that a person consumes affects his utility. To simplify things, which is what most undergraduate textbooks of microeconomics do, we'll set the number of goods to two goods. So two goods. So now our utility function, our new utility function, would now be a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2. Only x sub 1 and x sub 2. So before we move to the heavy math of it, we have to make four assumptions in the pre about the preferences of the consumer. The first assumption is that um, the, the first assumption is that the utility of the consumer is complete. And what this means, let me just write that down. What this means is that the consumer would always know which of two bundles he prefers or is indifferent to. For example, if the consumer consumes only two goods, rice and chicken, the assumption says that for any two combinations of rice and chicken, that the consumer is presented with, he would always know which one of those combinations he prefers over another. So if he was, for example, to choose between two, uh, five cups of rice, five rice, and no chicken, zero C, one cup of rice, one cup of rice, and one cup of chicken, and uh, two cups of rice, two cups of rice, and two cups of chicken. Um, let's just label this bundle A, bundle B, and bundle C. So the consumer would always know which of the three bundles, A, B, or C, he prefers or is indifferent to. Okay. The second assumption is transitivity. Let me just write that down again. Transitivity. Oh, transitivity. Right. And what transitivity tells us is that if consumer if the consumer prefers A over B and B over C, then the consumer should prefer bundle A over bundle C. Just like the transitivity uh, property of addition. And the third assumption is continuity. I'll just write that down as well. So it's continuity or the preference of the consumer is continuous continuity and what this tells us is that um, whenever a consumer chooses a bundle between a and c so i'll make a graph here a and c so let's say that this is um, the quantity of uh, rice and this one is the quantity of chicken so if we were if bundle a was over here bundle A was over here and bundle B was over here and the consumer was to choose between bundle A and bundle B uh, bundle B he would always prefer any point along the white line over bundle B because any point along the white line is closer to bundle A than to bundle B and the consumer prefers bundle A over bundle B and the fourth assumption is non-satiation or the consumer always prefers more to less so let's say that um the consumer right now has bundle b bundle b so the consumer has uh one cup of rice and one cup of chicken one rice one chicken if we were to increase the quantity of rice that the consumer has 
without changing how much chicken he has, the consumer would always prefer this bundle over the previous bundle, which is one rice, one chicken. On the other hand, if we don't change the quantity of rice and increase the quantity of chicken, the consumer would also prefer this bundle over the original bundle, which is one rice, one chicken. This also means that if the quantities of rice and chicken both go up, the consumer would always prefer any of these three bundles over the original bundle. Let's use this utility function as an example. Uh, let's write this down. U, which is a function of U, which is a function of X sub 1 and X sub 2, is equal to X sub 1, A, X sub 2, B. With intuition, we can say that as x sub 1 increases, u increases as well. The same can be seen for x sub 2 as long as x sub 1 and x sub 2 are positive numbers. In fact, if we were to take the partial derivatives of the utility function with respect to x sub 1, well, let's try to solve that, we'll actually see that the result is going to be positive as long as both the quantities of the goods consumed are greater than 0. So let me show that to you. If we were to take the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub 1, what this would give us is x sub 1, a, a minus 1, multiplied by x sub 2, b, which is always a positive number as long as a, x sub 1, and x sub 2 are positive numbers. On the other hand, if we were to look at the partial derivative of the utility function, let me write that down as well, partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x sub 2, what we'll find is this would be b x sub 1 raised to a and x sub 2 raised to b minus 1, which is also greater than 0 as long as or uh, this is called uh, for all. So this is read as for all. For all. Okay. Um, for all b x sub 1 x sub 2 greater than 0. So what this basically tells us is that my utility increases as I increase my consumption of x sub 1 or x sub 2. Well, you might be thinking... Why are we not considering x sub 1 and x sub 2 to be less than or equal to 0? We'll answer this in two parts. x sub 1 and x sub 2 can't be negative because it would make no sense for a consumer to buy negative quantities of goods. Well, what if the consumer was selling the good? Well, that's for another discussion. Here we're talking about utility. And utility is derived from consumption, not selling. So it would make no sense for a consumer or a person to consume negative quantities of goods. With regards to x sub 1 and x sub 2 being equal to 0, this actually makes sense. However, we are trying to assume that the consumer actually has money or a budget to spend. And being a utility maximizing consumer, he or she would consume as much x sub 1 and x sub 2 as he can. Now, recall the partial derivatives we took from the utility function. If we look at them, I'll just scroll right here. If we look at them, these are actually what we call our marginal utility. Uh, I'm sure some of you have encountered this in your introductory microeconomics class. Marginal utility. And this is sometimes denoted by MU. Okay, So marginal utility is, um, what it means is the additional utility I gain from consuming another product or another quantity of a good. So the partial derivative of my utility function with respect to x sub 1 is actually my mu1. And my partial derivative of my utility function with respect to good 2 is my mu2. And these two marginal utilities actually just indicate or tell us that um, how my utility changes as I consume more of good 1 for mu1. So this represents the additional utility I gain from, from 
additional consumption of x sub 1 and this one is the additional utility I gain from additional consumption of x sub 2 x sub 2 okay both our marginal utilities are positive and so what this means is that the consumer would always prefer to consume more goods or the greatest quantity of these goods as possible